Isa ibn Maryam. Wadali bi'afadihi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Hina kana yarfaw kawaida baytillahi al-muharram. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala atbahi khayr al-umam. Alladhi barakallahu bihim kafat al-nasa al-araba minhum al-ajam. Alhamdulillah alladhi anjala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. Alhamdulillah alladhi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuh wa nasta'gfiruh. Wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkil wa alayhi. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina. Wa min sayyati a'malina. Ma yahdi allahu falamudillala. Wa man yudil falahadiyala. Wa nashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Wahdahu la sharika la. Wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Rabbi shuahli sadri. Wa yassir li amri. Wahla al-ugdatan min lisani. Yafkahu qawli. Rabbi zidni ilma. My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with an Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Ishal Sheikh, member of the ISIP Indian chapter and a student from the Department of Psychology from Aspire College of Excellence will be your host today. On behalf of the ISIP team, I extend a very warm welcome to each and every participant who have joined us today. Alhamdulillah. Let me present a brief introduction of ISIP, International Student of Islamic Psychology, inshallah.
Alhamdulillah, it was a brief, beautiful, engaging and concise presentation delivering the key insights of ISIP with clarity and leaving a lasting in in leaving a lasting impression. Alhamdulillah. Now let us begin with the recitation of Quran. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim One second بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المعذوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. I will now read the meaning. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah the great the most gracious the most merciful praise be to Allah Lord of the worlds. The most gracious, the most merciful, master of the day of judgment. It is you we worship and upon you we call for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those you have blessed, nor the path against whom there is anger, nor those who are misguided. Alhamdulillah, we are very Alhamdulillah, we are very thrilled to introduce a launch of the ISIP Indian chapter. This marks a new beginning for fostering connections and collaboration within our Indian community. Your active involvement is crucial as we strengthen as we embark on this journey to strengthen our bonds and make meaningful contributions together. Inshallah. This is our mission statement. ISIP is an inclusive space designed to connect people with diverse backgrounds interested in Islamic psychology. We aim to disseminate knowledge, share resources, and discuss best practices in free and accessible manner. ISIP is a platform to enable development of people's personal and professional interests, studies, and understanding of Islamic psychology within their communities or countries of origin. The topic for today's lecture is Scope of Islamic Psychology in India by Sheikh Abdul Salam Al Madini, the founder and director of Aspire College of Excellence. Alhamdulillah, this is today's agenda. Alhamdulillah, we are almost done with the welcome address and guidelines. Next, we will have the lecture by by Sheikh Abdul Salam, followed by the question and answer session, and lastly, we'll conclude the session with the closing dua, inshallah. We suggest everybody in the participants to follow the Zoom etiquettes. Let's ensure we adhere to the meeting etiquette for a more productive and respectful dis discussion, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan for your understanding. It is my pleasure to introduce our esteemed guest speaker today, Sheikh Abdul Salam Al Madini. Sheikh Abdul Salam Al Madini is an Islamic scholar graduated from the Islamic University of Medina in Saudi Arabia. He has studied under many eminent and renowned scholars such as Sheikh Al Bani, Sheikh Ibn Al Baz, Sheikh Usaymin, and many more. He has played a major role in many books published by Darus Salam in Saudi Arabia. Sheikh was part of a fatwa committee based in Qatar before moving to India and establishing Aspire College of Excellence for Islamic Studies in Chennai and Bangalore. Sheikh is also a founder, founding research, researcher, 
professor at, Isla at Islamic Online University headed by Dr. Vilal Phillips. Now, without further ado, I would like our esteemed speaker, Sheikh Abdul Salam Al Madani, to take over. Jazakallah khairan for your patience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa laqibatu lil muttaqeen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulahi al-kareem amma ba'd. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afaqa wa al-ghina. Brothers and sisters, do you know about the psychology? This science was developed in this century. Before that, psychology was part of philosophy. Philosophy was part of the intellectuals, leaders, spiritual leaders or religious leaders. They used to try solve the problems and troubles of the society. So people always refer to them. According to their belief system, they used to guide the people. But slowly, when the church and the science was in fight, so science overcome the church because church was imposing their myths, false ideas on the scientists and they prohibited the people from research and any kind of development. So slowly the human being, they have rejected the church. When they rejected the church, they rejected the religion. When they rejected the religion, they rejected the existence of the God. This is how the new ideology, that is the secularism or similar isms, communism, secularism, socialism, have developed. So psychology is also basically a knowledge which study the mind of the human being, soul of the human being, emotions of the human being, and conduct of the human being. It is based on observation, experiments. So as long as they deny the God, they thought that everything human being can do that. And slowly, it was a very useful, beneficial science to support the human being to live a happy life and to correct their behavior, their conduct, and support the people who are in the troubles, inner troubles, to how to have their life, how to control themselves. It was good. It was useful. It was beneficial. But unfortunately, all these developments, these experiments, this research, somehow based on denial of the God, denial of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they thought that they themselves can achieve whatever they want. They thought that they themselves can solve all the problems. They thought that the human beings are not at all in the need of the God. This is how psychology of Western psychology was developed. You know that automatically as the believers as the Muslims, as those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, in the Sunnah, it was difficult for the Muslim Ummah to accept this kind of psychology. And we are not in the position to reject it at all. We can't reject. Because Talab al-Ilmi Fadidah, the Prophet ﷺ encourage always on learning and developing. Also, the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that ma anzal allahu da'an illa wa anzal ma'au dawa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send any 
disease or you can say uh, any illness the illa wa anzala ma'ahu dawa but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the cure for that almahu man alim some people they know some people they don't know that means what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, due to the mistake of the human being, time to time, Allah inflict them with the troubles. So sisters and brothers, you know that due to a lot of reasons, we have developed mental problems, mental diseases, psychological diseases. Why? This is not my topic today. Because we are against the God because we are against the guidance of the God because we are against the guidance of the perfect human being in this world that is the Prophet Muhammad When we are against the true guidance then automatically we started facing a lot of problems, a lot of diseases. So when the diseases came, the people started searching the solutions for that. If it is physical disease, then the physical medicine. If it is mental disease, then it is based on emotions, based on thinking, based on behavior. So we have to try to change the behavior or we have to change the thinking itself so that the behavior will change. So a development of psychology started in secular world. a secular community that was totally different against the Muslim ideology. These people, Western people, they don't believe in the existence of the creator. They say it's automatic happen. By itself it happened. We believe in the existence of one God, one creator. These people, they don't believe in the prophethood, in the day of judgment. We believe in the prophethood and in the day of judgment. So right now, the theories, the observations, the tools, or the symptoms that they were having in the Western world, Western culture, our Muslim, they learn from them, they are implementing on the Muslims, while the Muslims, as a believer, he believe in the God, he believe in the Prophet, he believe in the existence of the truth in this world in the form of the Quran and the Sunnah. So, right now, my dear brothers and sisters, you can understand easily that we need the psychology on the basis of Islamic fundamentals. That is the Islamic psychology. As you know that till this time, psychology is under the development. They did not unite, agree on one definition. They did not agree whether it is science or it is just theories. They have a lot of disagreement among themselves. We did not reach to the universal laws like the physics, chemistry, mathematics. A lot of sciences have been developed. They reached to the standard and the psychology right now is still under the development. They did not develop. So when it was clashing with our belief in the faith system, the Muslim scholars, they started talking about the Islamic psychology. Why? We are not against the development or research or analysis, analysis of the human characters, human emotions, human intellect. We are not against that. But we are against the research which is based on the atheism based on secularism. So right now, hopefully you understood 
what we mean by Islamic psychology. Okay, let us go ahead. Psychology is basically to bring the calmness, happiness to the human being. Psychology is to understand ourselves, to understand the behavior of the people, to understand the emotions of the people, to understand the subconscious of the people, to understand why we are here, to understand what is our end, to understand how to live in this life. If you see the subjects of psychology is very, very strong interrelated to our faith system, our belief system, our deen, our religion. That is why it is mandatory on every Muslim, every believer, he must know basics of his Islam, basics of his Iman, basics of the life of the Prophet wasallam. We cannot ignore it. And also, human being, based on their research, based on their necessities, based on their knowledge, based on their experiments, they develop. For example, right now, finance, economics, and all the subjects are developed a lot. Banking system. In the banking system, if we have removed the interest from the system and we have removed the injustice from the financial and economical systems, then all the system which is developed, recording and you know that uh, accounting, keeping the records, all this is essential. We are not against of that. We are against in the financial system because they implemented the interest and a lot of principles, which is injustice. It is the mercy for the lender, but it is difficult and injustice for the borrower. So if it is removed, then the system become merciful for the community. That is the Islamic finance. Similarly, in the psychology, whatever the developments are coming, whatever the research is being made, whatever the analysis they are making and they are studying the psychology of the nations, psychologists of the criminals, social psychology, nation psychology, individual psychology, human psychology, children psychology, women psychology. So they are studying. Whatever they are developed, we accept it. If it is not against the basic principle of Islam and the deen. I would like to say that the Muslims are also trying to develop this science and to guide the people to science. For example, modern psychology does not accept the influence of the Satan. That does not accept the influence of the evil eye. They deny it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, about the shaitan, about his enmity, about his existence. Time to time Allah inform us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us, guided us that be aware of your enemy. Inna shaitana lakum adub wa mubin, he's your enemy. So right now, if a human being influenced by the shaitan, so these people, they consider it as the disease, but highly possible that it is not a disease. It needs the dua and the supplications, which should be integrated in our psychology system. Because many times there is a dawa, there is the dua. Are you with me? My brothers and sisters see here. Once this atheist people, this secular people, materialistic people criticize one of the hadith which talks about the evil eye. 
which talk about the you know that blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a scholar in 1940s. They said that you are reciting the Quran, that is we call Ruqya Shari'iyah. That means the citation of Allah's words, divine words, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, divine words. When we recite, when we make dua, we believe that it is the shifa, it is the cure. And it brings the cure, it brings the calmness, it brings the happiness, it brings the, you know, that uh, a kind of content to them, comfort to them. That time, this is called to teach him. He did not do anything. He came on the stage in front of the people to one of those people who are representing the materialism. He started cursing him and using the full language against him about his family. So he become angry. <laughs> he said that you don't have akhlaq, adab, civilization. He said that I did not teach you, uh, touch you. I did not hurt you. But my words affected you. Isn't it? Similarly, the words of Allah also affect the people. And that is seen. Abdul Majid Zandani, one of the Muslim scientists in Yemen, he made an experiment that how the skin and the movement of the body works when the Quranic words touch them. So he saw, he observed with the scans that when the Quran is recited on the human being, so their body is changing and kind of response is there, waves is there. And he said that it was affecting both Muslims and non-Muslims, but it was more for the Muslims. Why? Because there was a faith system. Because there was a faith system. So my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran a lot of things. One of the words of the Quran, Sanudihim. Soon we show them the signs in the universe and in themselves. Until they believe that this is the only truth, that is the Quran, that is the message of the God, that is the message of the Prophet. In themselves, signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran and the hadith, they give the guidelines, they don't give the detailed knowledge. Okay? In the human being itself, right now human being, if you study the human being, somehow after some research, you must accept that there is a creator. I met one of the psychiatrists, I have written it in my article, psychiatrist who has the license of practice in USA. You know that they are very advanced people in the psychology in the uh, psychiatrist, PhD. Uh, he's the you know medical doctor, psychiatrist. When he was discussing with me, he said that when you study the human being, every cell of the human being, if it is affected, it affects our whole body. It shows us the person Whoever it is, this is his words. Whoever it is, he is a supreme personality because he created the human being in the way that each and every cell has a perfect job, function and interrelated to each other. He does not believe in the God, but he says there is a supreme power. Whoever it is, he is basically he's an Indian, Hindu, but studied in USA. 29 years of the experience. So my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he is going to show them the signs 
in themselves. Okay, okay. Let us go. Allah says in the Quran about the Prophet. Yuallimuhumul kitab wa yuzakkihim. The Prophet teach them the book. Wa yuzakkihim. Wa yuzakkihim means he purifies them from the evil of their themselves. What is the evil of the evil of themselves? Means surely unforeseen evil of ourselves. Strange brothers and sisters, human being. This human being is a supreme creatures of the God. We have love in the same heart. We have the hatred in the same heart. We have the courage in the same personality. We have the cowardness in the same personality. We have the friendship feelings in the same personality, in same heart, in same place. And we have the enmity, opposite emotions. It is difficult to have somewhere else in any mission, in any creatures. Subhanallah. Human being, knowledge and ignorance. Justice, reality. Love, hatred. Generosity, miserness. So we have the good characters, we have the bad characters. We have made it. And Allah says, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the nafs. Nafs, there are many terminologies which is used in the Quran in the Sunnah. Nafs, aqal, ruh, uh, modern psychology is not able to explain them or accept them. Okay. Akal. Akal is the intellect. Intellect means you are able to distinguish between right and wrong. Okay. Akal. There is a qalb. Qalb is translated as the heart. But in Islam, Islamic terminology, the scholar, they don't mean the qalb is only a piece of the flesh. No. They say that Albis, please turn off your uh, videos, please, sisters. It is disturbing. Uh, admin, please take care of that. So, akal is intellect, not emotions. Albis, emotions. So, the scholar they discuss about what is the difference between the akal. And between the uh, Qalb. Uh, Allama Iqbal was a philosopher. He said, Aqal ayyad hai saubhez bana leti hai ishq bechad anamullah nahki. Ishq is related to our emotions. Ishq does not think about the benefits and about the loss. Ishq is the love and affection. That's it. Aqal always balanced what is useful, what is harm, what is beneficial. Huh? So, Akal is there. So, Iman is not related to the Akal. Akal is a way, a step for the belief. Many people, they have the Akal. They know Islam is the truth. They don't accept it because emotionally they did not accept it. Okay. So, these things are discussed by our previous scholars. And it is mentioned in the tafsir of the Quran and tafsir of the Hadith and the Dua. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make always this Dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min shuroodi nafsi. Wallah, I seek your refuge, your support, your protection from my from my Evilness from my evil feelings, emotions. We are asking the protection of Allah from ourselves. My feelings, my emotion, automatically it affects my actions. So when there is a bad feelings, bad actions, bad results, so I want your protection from my bad, from the results of my bad actions.
اللہ میں نے اعوذ بکا من شرور نفسی و من سیعات عمالی اوکے سو اللہ سید اباؤٹ دا پروفیٹ دا یعلیمہم الکتاب دا پروفیٹ تیچ دیم دا بک دا نالج دا ادریس دا اقل انٹلیکٹ و یزکی ہم ہی پیوریفائز دیم فرم دا ایویل آف دیر دیم سیلف سو دیٹ ایز وی یو سی دا پروفیٹ دیٹ ایز اسلام دیٹ ایز دا اسلامیک سیکالوجی یو کن سی ایڈ ڈسکس اباؤٹ انگر it discuss about enmity it discuss about jealousy it discuss about competition it discuss about humiliation it discuss about arrogance aba was takbar the first one who showed the arrogance was shaitan against adam he did not accept he bowed in front of adam humbleness so good behavior good akhlaq good conduct bad akhlaq bad behavior and bad conduct it is mentioned in the hadith <coughs> the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave the guidance to the people they should adopt the good characters avoid the bad characters and for the characters actions is always based on our iman iman is related to our heart our emotion And our aqal is just to guide us, to learn. See here. First, we know about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First, we know about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the knowledge. We know the Prophet is the true messenger. Why? He did not study, did not read, did not learn. No one teacher. But he presented the Quran. These people are telling it is your book. He is telling, no, it is not my book. And you know that. I didn't study, I did not learn. So when then, then if he did not learn and it is not his book, then from where these words and this perfect Quran came. So it is from Allah then, automatically. Okay, so this is here where you have to use the aqal. When you use the aqal and you know that the Quran is true and the Prophet is true, then you start loving. Then you start increasing your iman, your faith. Allah did not say that increase your aqal. Aqal is the blessings of Allah. Iman, you try your best, you increase your iman. The more you increase the iman, the more you will be happy in this world. The more you will be satisfied. The more you will be away from the troubles, inner troubles. What Allah says, see here, you want calmness, coolness, happiness, problem for the life, then it is you be with your God, with your Lord. And when you believe in the God, the powerful, the one who control your heart, movement of the heart, uh, emotions of the heart, everything is from the God that automatically you will change yourself. So hopefully I tried my best to explain you people that psychology is not a new subject, new research for the Muslims. La uqsimu bi yawmil qiyama wa la uqsimu bin nafsil lawama Guilty feelings. Uh, bad feelings. Uh, and Uh, my nafs my nafs my nafs is uh, my emotions and my bad emotions that brings me and that takes me to do mistake to do the reality so Yusuf alayhi salam is telling nafs is always pulling the people to do something bad we have in ourself a nafs that is pulling us to do the bad. At the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in us a self-control system that nafs teach you that what 
you have done is wrong. That is lavvama. Lavvama is the nafs. Lavvama is that create the guilty feelings and teach you to correct yourself. Self control. Then if you develop the nafs nafsul lavvama, then automatically you will be in the peace. That is. Uh, ya ayyotuhan nafsul mutmainna a very stable very happy very you know, comfortable nafs you have so three nafs are mentioned in the quran for that we must believe in the god why because you challenge by your aql about the existence of the god you challenge with your aql about the uh, truthfulness of Islam and truthful, truthfulness of the Prophet. Challenge. So with your challenge, with your knowledge, you cannot prove that Quran is wrong. So this is intellectual level. After intellectual level, the next level is the emotional level. Adopt it. Love it. Increase it. Follow it. Develop it. Emotional level. Then when you are intellectually and emotionally you have changed yourself, your actions will be changed and you will be in the peace. Subhanallah. So Islam taught us don't compete with each other. Don't have the jealousy. Don't be angry. Be, be a, Always bear the mistakes of the people and forgive the mistakes of the people. Allah will forgive you. So automatically, sisters, if we adopt the good akhlaq, the good characters, uh, the positive thinking that is what we say are today's world, positiveness. So there is the positive attitude and the akhla, and there is the negative, that is the anger, enmity, jealousy, uh, humiliation, hurting, or many things are there. So I strongly advise my brothers and sisters right now, please go through the life of the Prophet teaching of the Prophet he was the happiest person in the world. He was the perfect person in the world. So go through it. Whatever he taught, accept it. Adopt it. Learn it. Develop it. Whatever he taught, uh, whatever he asked us to avoid, avoid it, then you will see you will have a very perfect personality, inshallah. The more you adopt it, the more you benefit from it. So this is the Islamic psychology. This is the Islamic psychology. Right now, the Western world are developing how to support the people, how to help the people to get out of their problems. Yes, they are doing, but they are not taking the guidance from the God and the Creator. That is the mistake. We should not do that. Hopefully, my point is very clear. As for the scope of psychology in India, you know that Islam is everywhere. So 20 crore Muslims in India, they have psychological problems, emotional problems, family problems, relationship problems. So if they go to the non-Muslims, so they will try to solve it with their perspective, which might not suit the Muslims. So that is why we need to cure, to support, to advise, to counsel, and counseling them based on the Islamic values. And that is a need. And this is the necessity for all the Muslims. Hopefully, I'm clear. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Abdul Salam, for sharing your in-depth knowledge. I want to express my admiration for your exceptional presentation. Your engaging delivery and insightful content truly captivated the audience. Your expertise on the subject matter is evident, and I appreciate the clarity in which you conveyed complex ideas. Jazakallah khairan for an enriching and well-presented well session.
For more information on uh, for more information and updates on ISIP, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and please feel free to join our WhatsApp group. The link will be sent in the chat in, in the chat box, inshallah. To all participants from the ISIP team, I sincerely thank you. Jazakallah khairan kaseera. Surely, Allah loves those who do good. Jazakallah khairan for all your, for all your support. Please, learn, please leave your feedback, brothers, dear brothers and sisters. Please forgive any shortcomings from our side. And I sincerely apologize for the audio audio issues we were experiencing in the middle, in the beginning. Uh, we understand the importance of clear communication, and I want to acknowledge this frustration may be caused the frustration. Uh, please rest assured, inshallah, this will not repeat again. Inshallah. Jazakallah khairan for your patience. Is there any question on succession? Should I wait for the question on succession or have to leave? Yes, we will be having question and succession, uh, Sheikh. So, okay. So, if any question, please read it. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, if there's any question, please uh, put them in the chat box below. Inshallah, uh, Sister Mahmuda will be reading them out for the Sheikh. For Sheikh. Sheikh, there is a question uh, you have said about evil eye. So, what is the surah number and ayat number of that uh, particular evil eye? I did not say about the evil eye in the Quran. I recited Sanudi Himayatina Filafaki of Yan Fusihim at Taita Bajana Lahum Anna Hulhak. It is in Swat Fusilat uh, ayat number. Uh, we don't remember the ayat number. We memorize the verses. I was Shamsi Waduhaha, Walkama, the Ida Talaha, and Naha, the Ida Jalaha, and Layli Ida Yakja. Uh, so similar verses I recited about the evil eye. There is in the Quran and in, there is in the Hadith. The Prophet وسلم, said, Al haqqun, evil eyes is true. The Prophet وسلم, said that uh, many deaths will happen in my Ummah due to the evil eye. So many things are mentioned in the Hadith, not in the Quran. I hope you got the answer, sister. And uh, one more request from our side. Uh, please fill in the feedback form. And uh, there is, it is there in the chat box. Okay, Sheikh, there is another question. What is the difference between spirituality and Islamic psychology? Spirituality. <laughs> Uh, how do you translate in the in the you know that in, in Urdu or in English spirituality? See here, we believe, which is the Western world does not believe, or materialistic people don't believe, or the atheist, uh, atheist and the secular people they don't believe. We believe we have the ruh. Ruh means I am the body, isn't it? But my body after my death also my body. So what is taken away from my body? So they say, they, what they say, you know that there are a lot of confusion for them. We say that is a creature that is ruh. Yes, aluna ka'ani ruh. Kuli ruh min amri rabbi. They were asking about what is the ruh. So the word ruh cannot be translated. Uh, they say uh, life. It is not life, just uh, ruh is not just life. Ruh is more than life. So we have our body and we have a ruh. When the human beings are formed after 120 days in the womb of the mother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order to ruh to be blown in his body. So the ruh is good, the ruh is bad, the ruh feels good things and bad things. That is the ruh. And we cannot explain the ruh till this time. Impossible to explain it. So that is called spirituality, that thing, those things that is related to the ruh. Okay. Psychology is, you know that. 
studying the emotions and the actions and observation of those actions and the uh, emotions of the people and trying to make a principle to deal in the future with that people or similar people. That is the psychology. Hopefully, uh, you know that when the Jews at the time of the Prophet, they ask the Prophet, inform us about the Ruh, what is Ruh? Allah says, in, tell them, this is from the order of the God who don't have the knowledge about it. That was the answer given to those people who are asking about the spirituality. Okay? So please don't ask much about the Ruh. <laughs> Uh, another question is how to be how can we be strong in our iman see here uh, the question is not related to the topic this is very important question how to be strong in your iman if you go to the gym daily basis if you go and practice daily basis your body become fit you become strong similarly Belief system should be daily basis, it should be refreshed. Okay? You talk about your akhirah. You discuss about your akhirah. You remember your death. You remember about the problems of the people. You remember about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You revise and you, you sit down with those people who are preferring the akhirah, jannah, goodness, social services, being dedicated to the humanity. So when you improve the good feelings, good emotion, positive thinking, positive actions, your iman increases. And if you diminish, decrease your uh, negatives, bad thing, bad akhlaq, bad uh, behaviors, so automatically your good things, the iman will increase. So your attachment to the social media will affect your iman. Your attachment to the bad thing will affect your iman. So please sacrifice your desires. We have the desires. Control your desires where Iman will increase. Okay. Is there any uh, proper Islamic counseling centers in India? No, not yet. <laughs> Muslims may Allah, uh, make the matters easy. Uh, we are fearing that if the situation remains as it is, might be in a few decades, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, majority of the Muslims won't be Muslims because the Muslims right now, majority of the Muslims, they don't know the Quran, they don't know the Hadith, they don't know the life of the Prophet and they are always in the worldly matters to earn the money. So may Allah protect us. That might be all of them are going to convert to the uh, atheism or Hinduism because the uh, Pleasure is that you, you know that psychologists, you know that peer pleasure. The society is right now pulling them to become Hindu, then they become Hindu because they don't have the resistance, they don't have the love for Islam. That is what happening, and it's the responsibility of you people to teach your family members, neighbors, and the society that there is a God and there is a message of the God, there is the truth. How do we build discipline? Practice. Strong will. Practice. Strong will. The standards of your religion, your deen, follow it. Follow it. There's are discipline. That is organized. That is discipline. Burning and evening duas are discipline. Being with the good people is the discipline. That is, all these things are highly recommended and taught in Islam. Is there any degree or course to practice in the field of Islamic psychology in India? Uh, Islamic psychology degree is not there, but uh, internationally, the Muslim scholars and the intellectuals they are trying to provide some, you know, that guidelines, some books and some diplomas uh, that will help you, inshallah. Uh, 
Does non-Muslim understand any benefit of counseling done by Islamic uh, counselors? No. When you approach to the patient, don't say Islam and non-Islam. <laughs> don't say that. That is not the way of counseling the people. You, when you approach to the non-Muslim, you tell them that believe in the God, doing the deeds, uh, and to believe in the Akhirah. That's that things you know that slowly you can uh, guide them, teach them. It is not that become Muslim and it is Islam. Don't say about Islam at all. Say that this is the truth for everyone. For everyone, Quran is not for me, not for the Arabs, not for Muslims, for the humanity. So this is the way our, our approach should be. Always is the humanity, because the Prophet said, "Rahmatullahi alamin, mercy for the whole universe." Nas, guidance for all the humanity. This is the way. Ask them to read the Quran, recite the Quran, let them to understand it. If they are intellectual, they are knowledgeable people. So, wind up or what? Yeah, so I'm I'm see, I'm taking more messages. Is there any course or degree? I have already asked this. I am do doing a diploma in mental health counseling, but there are many things which is totally against Sunnah or, or is, is it so? I have to do diploma in Islamic psychology as well. What is the question? The question is, she is doing a diplo diploma in uh, counseling from journal uh, university maybe. And she's asking, does she, she requires to do any diploma in Islamic counseling as well? Yes, 100%. Because you yourself is telling that something is against the Sunnah. So when you join the Islamic uh, psychology, at least you know that where we are making mistakes and where we have to avoid it, that guidance, you will get it. Might be professional, you are very strong, but Islamic perspective, you will learn if you are with the Islamic people. And if you want to benefit from the Aspire uh, activities, you will benefit, inshallah. What is the difference between Islamic psychology and modern psychology? The whole lecture was about that, sisters. <laughs> Summary is that modern psychology based on atheism, modern psychology is based on denial of the God, modern psychology is based on denial of the religion. Islamic psychology is that there is a God, you cannot deny it. God sends the guidance to the human being, you cannot deny it. Guidance is protected in the form of the Quran and the Sunnah. In the Prophet Sallallahu life is the perfect role model for us. We have to take the guidance from here. This is the difference between them and between us. That's it. How to overcome procrastination? Procrastination is, uh, you know, that a feeling, a person is not serious about it. If you you are sleeping and someone has thrown uh, a snake upon you, what do you do? You take the procrastination or what? <laughs> so procrastination is the basically it is lazy. So Always you make the dua and whatever the good thing is that you decide and you take the willpower, you know, uh, willpower strong and don't delay. That is the way. How to control, uh, how to uh, overcome. Overcome is that you decide and you walk. Okay. Sheikh, I am a student in IOU. Is it valid in India? 
if not where in can i take the exam in india in order to practice and get license please answer i o u university is online university they are issuing a degree but uh, according to my knowledge um, no way it is recognized you get the knowledge you get the acknowledgement the society may accept but the officially nobody recognize it and no way if you take bsc ba or something from the iou or any online university then you come to india pakistan asia they don't consider this as a valid uh, university degree so it is just knowledge society will accept it but not the degree Yeah. There is a difference between good and bad because something which is good for one is bad for another, and what is bad for one might not be good for other. Can you please no. clear good and bad? No, no, no. See here, you are confused about what is good, what is the bad. There is, you know, that natural things. There are, uh, you know, that natural things. Uh, that is automatically we consider it good. Good. Here is you are comparing good for one person, bad for one person. It is the comparison between the benefits, individual benefits. That individual benefits, for example, I lost the money in the business and you got it, so you are this good for you, bad for me. It is individual, but there is the you know that universal and natural loss, generosity, being kind with the people. So the good is good, the bad is bad, being injustice with the people. Doing injustice, so this is the bad. So uh, you, you basically it is you know that in Islamic terminologies the words are different in English. When we translate it, it become difficult for us to give that concept of Islamic uh, terminology also. So okay. How to convince people doing bidah things in Islam? Doing bidah in Islam. How to convince me? Teach, make them serious, take times. They must understand. Okay. I saw something about Maristan session yesterday. Hmm. But could not attend the session. What is it, Maristan, all about? You listen the YouTube recording. <laughs> Maristan is basically the concept. The Muslims were, you know, that a developed nation. They they rule the world one thousand years in the academics, uh, in the politics, in the science. So Maristan was the concept of hospitalization. So the the people who are sick mentally or you know that uh, have the mental diseases. So they used to keep them in the hospitals and provide them all the facilities. That is called Maristan, and that was the idea of the Muslims who developed it. Later on, the Muslims when they fall down, so they left all this. Okay, I think that we have to end up the session. Jazakallah khair, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I, on behalf of the entire team of IASIP, extend a deepest sense of gratitude to Allah in making this webinar a great success. I take this opportunity in thanking the co-founder of esteemed organization, Syed Jamaluddin Miri, and our core team, Sister Mahmooda, Sister Ashika, Sister Huda, Sister Hamida, Sister Jahan, Sister Dania, Sister Madiha, for your enthusiastic support. A special guest for today, Sheikh Abdul Salam Al Madni, for sharing his in-depth knowledge of psychology and Islam. Alhamdulillah. My hearty appreciation and gratitude to all those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar. Last but not least, I thank each and every participant for this webinar for enthusiastic participation. We would love to have you for a lot more incredible sessions like this in the future. Jazakallah khairan once again. With this, we will end with this closing dua. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa adub ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan everyone.